Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Jane Wamboy. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, this is our home. This is where we belong. Amen. I'm humble to have our visitors from far. I thank God for that. Amen. Today we have learned a lot and we will learn a lot. Uh, we are against abortion and uh, Mr. Jonathan is here and uh, we are talking with many, many people. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. thank you for this nice time. And we praise God for giving us a chance to be here as we are gathered here, the few of us. Hope what we're gonna talk is gonna make sense and it's gonna encourage one and save a life somewhere. Okay, and I'm Isaac. Thank you all. Amen, amen. I'm Moses. Yes. This is Mohai. And we are to we are gathered here to make some Bible studies and some a small topic. And I hope we're gonna try it. Yes. And it will work. Yes. Yes. Amen. Me amen. too. Thank you for being here, Moses. Chwanjo. And this one looking similar, <laughs> but a different person. Um, Madina ni maina. Eh, uh, tukuna tupiki dogo. Tuko ikombele tu. Tuki maliza tu arusia hapo. Uh, Thank you for being here, maina. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Oza. Talk to the young boys, Oza. Oza. Yeah. Hi, hi. 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 <laughs> Fine. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Dana Kengori. Mm, I am Guna. Yeah. Praise God. Welcome here. Uh, yes. I am happy. <laughs> I am happy. You look happy. Yes. <laughs> God bless you, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> Mia Jenny, a poa, Mamboni, poa, Quaje, to poa, on Coca Mimi. Our uh, Miriam, uh, we are here gathered uh, for some small talk but helpful. Hope it will nice you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Still find my, my, my girl there, my maybe somebody's daughter, my sister. Yeah. She's there, she's into a big man. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she has some daddy, pali, pali, and I'm bamba ne. And I'm to me, maybe you, let's say the daddy today sends you like, let's say. Baba Wasuka. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Waharia. Oh, okay. <laughs> he sends you today 5,000 shillings. Go buy something, go buy lunch. Tomorrow, go buy something. And I'm to, I'm into it anyway, surely. Today she has sent me 3,000. Send me 10,000. Three days there, I have an emergency. I want 30,000. Tomorrow, I keep my mom. My mom wants something, please. I send me. Send, yeah, she sends me 50,000. And at the end of the day, he's sending you. Who is this sending you all this money? How are you paying him? How are you going to return this money? Good question. Good question. I think you phrased it well. And so, how is the money will be paid back? It's something we ought to to know because i'm sure we at the end of the day we shall send this money we shall return this money in form of we shall return this money in form of of sexuality yeah sexual it's, favors yeah yeah can we meet today yeah sure i'm busy but I'll, because it's you i'll create time yeah you find you you risk you go risk your life because this man has been doing you a great favor because this lady has been doing something great that it's abnormal to you. You have to go now and give him your body in return because he sent you 10,000. Because he sent you. I'll be a surely. This is how these things have been paid. Because we got desires. Yeah. Desires. Life desires that are too much. Yeah. And we are not able to pay them back. And we are forced to pay them with yeah. our bodies. Yeah. Surely. This is an issue we have to look at. This is an issue we have to be concerned of at this pace, at this generation of ours. Or else we shall find ourselves demolished by the wrath of God.
QI setting. So we're talking of this issue of, I've written here, um, you called them what? I've written sugar daddies, you said? Mama Waharia. Mama Waharia, sugar mommies. <laughs> Mama Waharia and Mama sugar Waharia. daddies? <laughs> Baba Wasukari? Mubabas. Mubabas. <laughs> Mubabas. Mubabas. And Mama Waharia. Okay, sugar mommies and sugar daddies, right? That's what we're talking about. Now, um, today we're talking primarily from a biblical perspective, right? Because we have an agreement here. We'll do introductions later when, uh, when Samuel arrives. We're waiting for him. We left a rabbit in town in a box by mistake. Everyone forgot who was supposed to be carrying the rabbit. And we were going to eat the rabbit, but we left it in a box. And so he went to retrieve it. <laughs> Luck, uh, thankfully, the, the rabbit was, was still there. So now this issue of sugar daddies and sugar mommies from a biblical perspective... Um, what it comes down to, especially in the situation that you brought up, Isaac, uh, is something really dishonorable um, because I think biblically the word that would have been used in the Bible is a concubine because you're not talking about a woman marrying a man. Um, that older woman, it would be very unusual, but for her to marry a younger man, it would be ill-advised. But she's not marrying him. But you're talking about you're in poverty as a young person, a young man or a young woman, and for sexual favors, you're getting access to that cash flow that you need that you don't have otherwise, right? You feel you don't have otherwise. Not because you're starving, necessarily, but um, because you want those nice things. Is it true? Yeah. And to me, it's hard to blame people who are starving for getting in uh, a situation like that. Um, but when it comes to getting the, the television, like you said, the, the widescreen TV, the car to drive, can we be honest? We're talking about prostitution, right? It really is a form of prostitution. Cindy, yeah. So it's, it's something normal, it's something sinful, something normal. But the question is, I think it reaches, I think it reaches a different level of abomination. When you're a young man, let's say for example, you're a young man and you've got this girlfriend. I saw a music video where the girl is saying, I have a problem, I forget how the song goes, help me decide, I have this guy, he has money, I have the other guy, he's a Rasta, I don't know which one to go. And really, in maybe most cases, she's, nowadays she's sleeping with both of them, right? Which is an abomination, because it's like you are sowing your field with two different seeds at the same time, right? And she's being treated like a prostitute. A whore, right? And so not all the whores are standing on the street selling themselves just like that on the street. Some of them are having the sugar mommies and sugar daddies. But it becomes even worse, and that would be like a concubine in the Bible. It becomes even worse if you're a young man and you know you have the girlfriend, you're fornicating with her, but she's also got this sugar daddy, right? And can you come here, Isaac? We sit, we talk. Yeah. I, I feel better when you're here, like I'm not preaching, because I can preach. So I know it's happening a lot, and I hear about it, um, especially in Nigeria, but also all around the world, where um, the girl is having her, her live-in boyfriend or her daily boyfriend, her boyfriend on the streets, the one who's her age, right? But she's also got the sugar daddy, right? The old man who's hiring her for sexual favors, buying her cars, making sure she has cash flow today, like the way you're talking about. From a biblical perspective, this is a form of prostitution. She's using herself, and they're using her as a whore. So when the, when the, when the young man knows, first of all, he's fornicating with her, right? They're not married, and yet they're having sex, right? They're, they're, they're playing games with one another. Second of all, it's another, that's one thing, it's another level where he knows because she's probably sharing that money of the sugar daddy with him, right? 
So he's actually benefiting from the fact that um, that she has a sugar daddy who's who's giving her that money. Uh, so her boyfriend is also benefiting from it. So he's not just a boyfriend, he's a pimp. What's a pimp? She'll be forced to leave me hmm. to go and satisfy that thing. That, you know, say you're the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. say you're the one. to leave me and go and satisfy that thing. And you're consenting to it. And I'm still there. Yeah. So at the end of the day, surely, let's be honest. Most of them, they, they are just... Yeah. yeah. You're a pimp. What's a pimp? A pimp is that man whose job is to is to farm out the prostitutes, right? The prostitute has a brothel, and, and there must be a man there to enforce the rules of the brothel, right? Brothel is the place you go, a house of prostitution, yeah. But a pro, but a, a brothel cannot operate. Even a brothel must have a man of the house, right? And that's the man that makes sure everyone pays. Otherwise, every man can just come can and. Take and just take, because they are bigger than the women, right? There must be a man enforcing the rules. That's the pimp. If he's on the street, he's pimping on the street. He's pimping in a brothel. He's the man who, the security, the bouncer of the brothel, right? So what you're effectively, when you're sharing a woman with her sugar daddy, because you like it, you don't like it, but you like it more that she has money. You like to ride in her car. You know he doesn't mind, okay? He's using her as a prostitute, and you're becoming the pimp. You're the one who consents to the prostitution, okay? Uh, in this case, your girlfriend, your concubine, right? Because the Bible doesn't has no such thing, this category we have of girlfriend. She's not your wife, boyfriend. He's not my husband, but I'm sleeping with him like a husband. She's not my wife, but I'm... The Bible, there's no word in the Bible for that, it, other than fornication, Okay? For the sin of fornication. But aside from the sin of fornication, there's no word for, for boyfriend, girlfriend. In French, it's uh, ma petite amie, my little friend, you know. Meaning, what the Bible says, this is concubinage. If you're keeping a woman like that, but she's only yours, but she's not your wife, that's your concubine. Let's be honest. It, a sex slave, okay? But in the Bible, it would be yours and yours alone. And I'm not endorsing that, but that's the word for it in the Bible. But this thing today of people sharing, all you're doing is using a woman as a prostitute. So you're desecrating her body, and she's desecrating yours because you're agreeing to share her with another man, which is abominable, according to the Bible. According to the Bible. Now, um, any other point of that? I think that I think something we should point out and talk about more later is that, and even now, is that it's one thing they call uh, prostitution the oldest profession. Okay, and by the way, the man is just as sinful. In the Bible, the it's called a whoremonger. We have that scripture: "Neither whoremongers, don't be deceived." Where's my phone here? I don't have that in front of me. Neither whoremongers. We look it up in our Bibles. Turn with me in your Bibles to First Corinthians chapter six. <clears throat> I'm reading from New King James, but we've got most of the rest of them have King James. 1 Corinthians 6. Where's my kahal? I've put it where? Okay, for <clears throat> my late father, this was his Bible. He's actually underlined and highlighted this passage. So let's yeah, Isaac, will you lean in and, and read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Okay, yeah, lean this way and project. 9 to 11. Yes. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers, nor themselves with mankind, 
no thieves, no coveters, no drunkards, no revealers, no exhausters. Ex extortioners. Extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And as such were some of you, but ye are, are washed, but ye are sacrificed, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. All right. First Corinthians, thank you. That was which verse? First Corinthians, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate is what this says. I don't agree with this King, New King James Version. It says homosexuals, that's a mistake. Nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Paul's writing to the, the Christians at the church at Corinth. <clears throat> In that church, he's saying, some of you, before you knew God, were doing these things. But you were washed, baptized, right? Washed with water, baptized. You were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This one, uh, New King James is making a big mistake calling it homosexuals. There's no such word in the Bible, by the way. And there's no such thing as a homosexual. There's sexual. Sect, sexual comes from, similar to the word sect, meaning that there's division. A sect is a division, right? Human beings and dogs and many other animals, right, reproduce through male and female, even some plants. Same deal. Meaning they have male and female. The way they reproduce the next generation is through the intercourse between what? The male and the female, okay? So <clears throat> there really is no homosexual. Because no amount of anything that two males do together or two females do together can reproduce anything. So this is a, a word that was invented in the 20th century, okay? Or, or the very end of the 19th century. Um, and, and it's not a good word. It's not what the Bible says here. What the Bible says here in the Greek, Paul says the effeminate, okay? And the effeminate are... If two men engage in sodomy... You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You, you call it gayism here. One of them, but if it's two men, one of them has to play the role of the woman. Okay? One of them plays the role of a man. They're both men. Sindio. But when they do that horrible thing, which is deserving of death, one of them acts like he's a woman. Which is why Moses says, when we look back in, in the Pentateuch, we said, what is the Pentateuch, Isaac? You can, you can tell me. Lean forward, please. You can say it's the five books of Moses. Of Moses. The Pentateuch is the five books. The first five books of the Bible, Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. Genesis, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We find in the Pentateuch that Moses says, don't lay down with a man like with another, as though he were a woman. Excuse me. Don't sleep with a man as though he was a woman. Okay? Fine, you can sleep in a bed with another man. There's nothing wrong with that. Happens all the time. You sleep with your brother, right? <clears throat> but he means don't use a man in bed the way as though he were a woman. Got it? And when you do that, Paul is being even more specific here. He says, neither the effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Meaning, both one, the one who plays the woman is the effeminate. Effeminate is to act like a woman. You're not a woman, right? I'm not a woman. So this man is acting like his butthole, his anus, his rectum, is a vagina. But is it a vagina? It's a lie. That is what God... In fact, there's a thing called an anal sphincter. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have um, this sphincter in your esophagus, right? It's spelled S-P-H-I-N-C-T-E-R. And a sphincter is a one-way valve, like a check valve designed to allow fluid to flow one direction, right? Fluid or solid or something to go one direction and not go the other way. When this sphincter in your esophagus is, is not um, working, you get acid reflux, meaning the acid is supposed to not come up. 
It's supposed to allow food to go down, but acid not to come up. But when it malfunctions, you have indigestion and heartburn, right? You've heard of people having heartburn. It's because this sphincter is going the wrong, <clears throat> allowing fluids to go the wrong direction. Again, in your heart, you have a sphincter and the aorta, which allows, <clears throat> pardon me, let me drink my, my coffee here. In your heart, you want the blood to go one direction and from one chamber to another, right? And not to go back. If you have a heart murmur, it means that valve, that sphincter in your heart is not working. So God's used this device in different parts of your body. And he's, got, he's also put one, a similar one, also called a sphincter, <clears throat> on your anus of a, a man or a woman. You have an anal sphincter. And it's designed to pinch off the poops, right? So that you can poop normally and, you, and not be running. As you go around town all day, the poop is coming out. And it's designed to go one way out of your body, right? God has designed a woman's vagina to receive, okay? It's designed and tough, and the skin and every part of it is designed to be able to be penetrated and to receive sperm, right? Semen. But the anal, the, the rectum and the anus has a sphincter there. There's no sphincter on a woman's vagina. The anus has a sphincter. And when you push it the wrong way, even if you're plumbing uh, a house, and you have a check valve there, and you force, I, in my oil field work, I do this all the time, I, I work with a check valve. It's allowed, we want the oil to go this way, it's not supposed to go back, or we can be in danger. Something can explode. But if you force something through the wrong way, that valve is broken, okay? If you do it, you might get away with it once, and it's still okay. You do it again, eventually you, you break that valve. Maybe the first time, maybe after several times. Forcing it. It's not designed to go that way. The same with an anal sphincter. When a man pretends, which is a lie, Sindil, he pretends that his uh, anus is a vagina and he allows another man to abuse. That's not use, that's abuse. You see the distinction between use and abuse. Use is when you use something the way it's intended, the way it's designed and created. So Paul is saying, those people who are effeminate, will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, those people who play the role of a woman to another man and they're not a woman. He's not a woman. Okay? And then the next, he says, also abusers of themselves with mankind. That's what it says in your book. And it's better than what it says in the King James. King James says sodomites. Yes, it's true, they're sodomites. But what Paul actually says is, in other words, self-abuse in the day of King James, in English, self-abuse is masturbation. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's a word for, if you look it up in the dictionary, self-abuse is masturbation. And masturbation is normally something someone is doing alone with himself, right? <clears throat> but what Paul is saying, not only is it the one who is acting like the woman, but the one who is doing masturbation using another man. Okay? Whether he's using the man's hand, or using the man's rectum, or another part of the body, I don't know. The... So Paul's saying it's not sex. There's no homosexual. You're not having... You can't... A man cannot have sex with another man. All you're doing is abusing the other man, and the other man is allowing himself to be abused, and it's all based on the lie that he's like a woman and he's not like a woman. He's desecrating the image of God in a man. And the man is consenting. He's not being raped. A man could be raped, but it, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a man... The effeminate one is the man consenting to act like a woman... And the abuser of himself is the one saying, I am willing to use another man to help me masturbate. You get my point? Very disgusting, right? Very shameful. But it's good that Paul talks about it this way. He says, don't be deceived. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God doing these things. Now, we live in a time when they're calling this love right? They're saying, why won't you let us love one another? We love one another. And they won't let me on TV to debate about this. Help get me on TV. I know what to do. Like Pastor Dr. Sumpa in Uganda, I know how to talk to these people. Because if I love you, Isaac, as my brother in the Lord, right? 
And if you love me as your brother in the Lord, can you think of such a thing as that? And the thing that will stop you from thinking of using me to masturbate or me using you to masturbate is because of love. Sindio. It will never enter my head. You see, Jonathan and David in the Bible, and these gays in America and other places, even the ones operating around here, okay, they always say, oh, it was David and Jonathan. They even see uh, David, because it, the Bible says that uh, David loved Jonathan more than that love that a man loves with a woman. And these idiots know so little about love that they think that means that they were abusing one another. They, they even see, I've seen, I've run into them. I'm not making this up. Do you believe me? Yeah. They even see John, the beloved, laying on the chest of Jesus and sleeping there. And they say, these were sodomites. The way I went to jail, you know I went to jail in 2010 because Elton John told all of America in a newspaper that Jesus was a gay man. Okay? Why am I bringing this up? The big lie of the devil is to say that whatever you do to have the, the nice feeling of orgasm when you release seed, or if a woman gets the orgasm from stimulating her sex organs, right? And God made that. That thing is good. But now these people have, and it's made for sex between husband and wife, right? Where there's real love and real, twi real trust. But what... These people are saying is that anything that I do to someone else or someone else does to me to make me have that orgasm is love. And that's a lie. They're abusing one another. If you loved one another, you can't abuse the other person. Cindy, any question about that? So, so Paul is saying some of these people were prostitutes in pagan temples. Like we were watching last night uh, Jason and the Argonauts, right? And we saw they're having all these pagan temples with idols of Hera and Zeus, and they're talking to them and doing sacrifices, right? So some of those temples, religious temples, had a ritual prostitutions where the, 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 the priests and the priestesses in those temples of pagan idols will have sex with people as a religious sex. That's what pe the Bible says the people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. And those who uh, dwelt in the shadow, unto them that light has come. I'm paraphrasing it. <laughs> I'm not getting it quite right. The point being that before the gospel of Jesus Christ came into the pagan world, people were doing religious acts, calling it their religious worship, that were abominable, including male prostitution, and female prostitution. So Paul is saying, verse 11, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11, such were some of you. Some of you were revilers, drunkards, covetous people, thieves, extortioners. You know what is extortion? We have this guy, Jeffrey, this man, Jeffrey Epstein, this Jew, who was working for Israel and other intelligence agencies. And he was catching politicians like Bill Clinton and catching them having sex with he was providing for them uh, young prostitutes who were too young and then secretly taping videos of them. And this is a sex version of extortion, but not all extortion is sex. But then he would get that video and now you control a president, you control a person in power because you have a video of them breaking, breaking the law, right? And they're in a position of great power. Now you can make them do like a puppet. Whatever they... You want them to do. They, you own them. They're your slave, right? Because if they don't do as you say, you'll release the video of them committing a felony with a child or an underage girl. Okay? I'm telling you a, a big secret. This is how, if you ever wonder how things work, you talk about Illuminati at the center of power in the world. But even in churches, these things are happening. Okay, so extortion is when extortion is when you use something that you have, um, like I kidnap your child, right? Or in this case, they have a video of you that you don't want to be released, a blackmail, right? Or I kidnap your child, or I take your cow, you know, right? Or I somehow I get leverage on you so that the thing that you need, either your life or your child's life 
or your dignity or your freedom or your pride or you're being threatened with jail, something that you need and I'm using it so you give me money or you, or you do what I say. That's extorting. So Paul is saying that people don't get hung up on the sins. People make big mistakes, especially not knowing Jesus. We can do anything. Humans are full of sin. But we need God. He's saying, I'm not concerned. Some of you were this. Such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Amen? Now here's when the problem comes in. is when we start to name the name of Jesus, okay? And we talk about the Bible and the power of God. And yet we're doing these things that we say God delivered us from. But we're doing these things. And not doing them as a mistake. Oh my God, I made a mistake. We go to confess, right? Forgive me. And we confess publicly or you have to confess to a priest or some things just between you and God, but you, t you seriously know you did wrong. No, I'm not talking about that. People make mistakes. Christians sin, okay? And what does the Bible say? What, I don't remember the, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not fake confession, real, con hey, I really did it. <laughs> no excuses, I did it. Forgive me. I repent. And that's the sacrament of confession, right? Yeah. So, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Christians, people who say they love God, who as a practice deliberately think God is just cool with them being these things, doing these things, and God is like them. What's the psalm we read yesterday? You interrupt me if you need to. Please, yeah. It was Psalms number, which one? Zaburiya Hamsini. Can we look at it? All right. But we've established that Paul has two categories. But he lumps them together. Those men who act like the woman, right? We're talking about gayism now. But really it's not gayism. It's sodomy. Because it's what the people were doing in where? In Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, also in Israel. We're doing it, and kings like Josiah, righteous kings, drove them out. But they were called Sodomites, right? Not gays, not homosexuals. <laughs> if they were homosexuals, let me challenge you. If the, even though this version says homosexual, it's a mistake. The Bible doesn't say that. Um, this is the English translation. If there was homosexuals, <laughs> one of them, one day, even just one time, will poop out a baby. You go to Salani, removing the poops. <laughs> daddy, daddy. It can't, can it happen? Yeah, in someone's dream. In a dream, in a very weird dream. Sindio, is, is the English enough? Okay, you're getting something? Daniel, you're getting something? Yes. Okay, all right. So we look at Psalms 50 or, or more questions. Maybe, maybe Moses... Yes, Moses. Yeah? I think we can look at it. We can look at some Zaburi Hamsini. Yeah, you said you, now you get me confused. <laughs> Yesterday you were saying 150. So, who can read? Um, Miriam, can you read Psalms 50 for us, please? In a clear, um, in a clear reading. Use that big Bible. Psalms 50, the mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. Our fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. Tempestuous. Sorry. He shall call... To the heavens from above and all and to the earth and he may judge his people gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by my sacrifice and the heavens shall declare his righteousness for god is judge for, for for god is judge himself seller 
Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even the, thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifice, for the sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continual, continually before me. I will take no barlock out of thy house, nor nor he goes out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the folds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I will not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. I will eat the flesh of the bulls or drink the blood of the goats. Offer. Will I? Go back. Will I? 13. You said I will. Will I? Oh, will I eat the flesh of, of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, God, God said, What must thou do to declare my status, statuses, or that thou should, shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing you hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee, when thou sowest a thief, then thou art consented with him and, ha and has hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done and I kept silence. Though, the, though, though thou thoughtest thou thoughtest that I was altogether altogether as such an one. one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this: ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none, and there be none to deliver. Whose offereth praise glorifieth me. To him that ordereth this conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Okay. Let's, let me pay the...